Welcome to the WW News Today podcast, episode 13. That's unlucky. Is it? I mean, also our, our topic, yeah, the, the person we're going to talk about and... <laughs> I think just in general things are unlucky these days. What do you think? I don't know. I think I've been on a pretty good luck streak for the last week, so I'm going to keep it up. I a don't lot wanna... of things I can't talk about yet, but pretty good luck. I don't want to say I'm unlucky, but uh, I went on a cruise recently, Royal Caribbean, and I did so poorly in their casino that they have sent me two different offers for free cruises. Maybe that's common. I, I don't know. I've never cruised Royal Caribbean before. I've never been offered a free cruise by Disney, so I can't. I don't know. Maybe no, they don't you do are that. lucky. Yeah, it's not the same. No, they do if you're on the media list. <laughs> My name is Eric Morton. With me, as oh. always, is Tom Corliss. You're watching WW News Today podcast. Right now, the Wigs members, uh, that's our Patreon group, they're watching us live. We're recording this ahead of time, as we always do. Chat. They get to see the studio feed. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a WIGS member or learning more about it, you can go to www.nt.com slash Patreon or patreon.com slash www.nt. Either way works. And for as little as 2 bucks a month, you can support us. The WIGS at the $7 and up level get to watch us do this live. They get to watch Tom do a Zoom. No, I'm sorry. They no, watch that's Tom Club do 33. post shows. Club 33, they get to do All levels eventually Zoom. get to watch the recording of the Zoom, though. But if yeah. you're Club 33 and up, you actually get to. We, we, you get, they get it's kind of like a cool hangout. We all, like, there's a group of, like, 15 of us that always get together once a month, and we, like, catch up on what's going on, and we talk about, um, like this show, we talk about Disney stuff, but then we also event, eventually end up in nonsense. I forget what was the nonsense we talked about last time. But. Do you eat candy and then people get all cranky in the comments about the noise of the candy? Eating? No, I. Oh, I heard. Yeah, I, I heard someone said that. it was ASMR. There was the. Candy I've heard ASMR. that. I've also heard they didn't like. It. I mean, I don't like listening to people eat. I don't really. These are apparently sensitive microphones. Yeah, Maybe they are. Need, ba- I didn't know how they were going to hear. I I couldn't hear that chewing. Also, hey, check it out. New threads. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get the memo that we were going to start wearing the, the park candy. That's stuff okay. Yet. You can wear yours next time. But today's the fiftieth anniversary of Pirates of the Caribbean, so I wore my Pirates of the Caribbean shirt. I don't know what camera to look at that one. Yeah, I, I did not. I'm wearing this new shirt from Park Candy, new sponsor. And if you want to get a discount for being one of our listeners, you can go to their uh, wwnt dot link slash Park Candy. Yep. Uh, and if you use wdwnt at checkout. You get 15% off. Yeah. Right? It's a little checkout code. It's nice. A little perk just for uh, for watching yeah. us. What do you think? So they're, got- a, new, they're a new partner yeah. because um, we used to, ages ago, Roosevelt used to send me shirts. Um, and that was nice and all. But they're, you know, their prices have skyrocketed. And they don't make park-specific stuff, right? right. And so I've kind of, I don't know, I stopped buying a lot of Roosevelt's over the years. And so when someone came, I was like, well, you know. There's really great people at Park Candy, and they make shirts that are the old Roosevelt's material, and yeah. they're actually park-related. Four-way like, stretch. That's nice. Stretchy. I mean, they're comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. Yeah, very comfortable. So, so. Um, I think moving forward, our WWNT button-downs are going to be Park Candy. I think that's the that's yeah. the end goal, so we'll talk about that at a later time. But in the meantime, they have a lot of cool park shirts. I have the, the purple Spaceship. I didn't wear one today. Oh, uh, Spaceship Earth. I got that one, purple yeah. Spaceship Earth one I really like, and there's a Tiki Room one that's very cute. And um, They, they don't just make fan. shirts either. They make other there's stuff. There's dresses, bags, and bags. Stuff, that, stuff for everybody. Yeah. A bottle for you? Bottle openers? Bottle openers. Yeah. Uh, they're um, all for all sizes. There's all kinds of yeah. merchandise. So please check them out. I mean, if they fit us, they'll fit anyone. So. Oh, boy. I know. After that Reese's After show, if Reese's anything thing, fits us. I know. I, yeah, I got to start running again. I was, just pretend I'm training for a half marathon. I'm going to get back on. I have a I have a plan, the Peloton and all this stuff. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, things get away from you. Obviously, the last few years have been rough for me. So um, got to get back take, into fighting shape. I got to take uh, all the Buena Vista construction company vests off of my Nordic track and start using that again. <laughs> So what are you doing for Christmas? I'm going home to New York because my mother had knee surgery this year. Usually they come here, Mm -hmm. um, but my mother had knee surgery that was put off several times, probably also because we went to Japan and Paris. I think she put it off twice because of those Uh trips. And then finally she went and got it done. And obviously, you know, my mother is um, 
She has very bad arthritis, which is a hell of a combination, apparently, when you have knee surgery uh, yeah. um, because you can't take your arthritis medication for several weeks. And so her recovery is a little slower than it would be for, let's say, someone that doesn't have arthritis. So um, they were going to try to come here, and I said, no, just stop. You're going to damage your knee getting cramped on an airplane Come in Orlando. I'll just come home for a couple of days, and then you know, in the spring when you're, you know, at a hundred percent, you know, you come visit. I promise you, there's nothing new and exciting here, unless you really want to walk through a water, <laughs> walk through and, and a couple of light up ground pieces. <laughs> there's nothing new and exciting. If they're still lighting up by then, yeah, yeah I mean, we'll see. I saw there was a tweet. I think Mickey Views tweeted that mm. he had an inside source that's from pressure washing. Right, the seals are, you know, yeah, they are industrial yeah, yeah. grade seals, but they're not designed to stand up to 4,400 PSI pressure mm -hmm. washers and it got in there and, and destroyed or damaged a lot of the lights. Maybe. So, I don't know. Makes sense. You Sometimes know, yeah. these inside sources are made up though, so I don't know. Well, we're not gonna, give your mother my best. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna change the topic. Come what on. I wanna know though, what a, is a Tom Corliss, is a Corliss family Christmas, is it like uh, on, that Tony Ragu talks about the Italian family Christmas. Oh yeah, where the kids get Gucci shoes and no, no, but, no but Gucci shoes. I've definitely received a gold cross for a, for an occasion that's happened. Is this like small family get together, or is this every like the whole? It depends on the year. I don't even know whose whose house we're going to this year. I have no idea. So it could be like fifty people in it like used a one to bedroom be like apartment, or there there's one. Uh, there's one group in the family that is very well to do and has a very large home, a mansion you may call it, and they used to host Christmas for many years, and it was a lot of people. We're talking like seventy-five to hundred people. Wow! And like, and like people eating in all different rooms and the craziness. Um, that that's long behind us now, but um, yeah. So they'll they'll be smaller affairs, and it it, it depends. I don't know. Sometimes it's dinner on the Corliss side. Sometimes it's the Pinto side. Um, we'll, you know, we'll see what. What are you doing? Uh, nothing. So, so your significant other's leaving you. <laughs> not like. <laughs> not permanently. No. Next week she's going to uh, leave for a few days to go. She has some family in Texas. Yeah. And they all get together. And this year just. With the way that travel was breaking out and yeah. a budget and finding some place to put Poppy when there's a dog pandemic, we decided I'm going to stay here. Plus, I'm the only you know I got to you're you're gone. Somebody's got to be here in case of emergency. Uh, so she'll be back on Christmas Eve. In case though. someone has to feed the bears. Yeah, she'll be, <laughs> she'll be back on Christmas Eve. I will get. I will not be spending Christmas Day alone. Okay, uh, but I'm I mean to I keep spent Thanksgiving alone in Hong Kong. So. Yeah, you didn't seem miserable next, over it though. I'm booked. I'm currently the sole person booked on a cruise during Christmas next year. Because that's you mean the, the sole person. I'm the only person on that reservation. We haven't. Oh, you mean so like? I thought you meant like the the cruise is complete. No, like ghost, I, ghost cruise. I mean, no. <laughs> um, it's not a Royal Caribbean. So no, <laughs> it's not the case. Um, I'm the only person from the staff or, or otherwise booked on that uh, maiden voyage on the treasure. We'll see. I have to. Decide who else I want to bring or whatever I'm going to do. I don't know at this point. I don't know who else wants to go on a cruise Christmas week. I may just have to take my family. I assume everyone else has things to do. You, know, I don't you know. never know. We'll figure it out. You might be able to auction it off. I'm not sharing a room with someone <laughs> I don't know. I'm Share sorry. a room with Tom Corliss on the Sharing a room with voyage. Eric or Jason is enough. Never mind someone you don't know. That's mean. <laughs> Joking. Oh, boy. Uh, we're, we should get right into it, right? It's been just over a year since Bob Chapek was fired as CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Yeah. And so today we're going to discuss what has happened since then, what has mm -hmm. gotten better, what has maybe gotten worse, or what hasn't or changed. Or maybe and things haven't How do you changed, feel about right? stuff? Yeah. So I remember when he was fired because... <laughs> so do I. I mean, I remember specifically because I went out to meet you at a a, a house we were... Uh, guests in, yeah, uh, that you were filming a, a review vacation of home. a vacation home, yeah, and uh, you're in this massive property by yourself because I I was like, yeah. all right, man, I'll catch you later. It's like a, it wasn't yeah. a Sunday night. It was a Sunday, night. and yeah. uh, I'm like, I'll catch you later. I drive yeah. home, and I get there, and I'm like, boom, JPEG fired. 
Tom. Who's I was on the number. phone with someone, and my like in my on my ear, the phone like eighteen people texting me. The phone just starts going crazy, and I'm, I pull away, and I just see one come up that says that. And I'm like, I have to go. And I'm, I'm the like, editor I tonight. I just hung up on whoever. You know, Sunday nights, if you're if you're the main editor at WWT, Sunday nights are typically, I would say, of the seven days of the week, the absolute slowest period of the week right, for us news-wise right. is Sunday night. Yeah, you're Saturday down. night, things can even happen, but Sunday night, almost never. Yeah, so no one expected... Not only did you have your guard down, but you were supposed to be filming all this content while you were out there. Well, that there was done already, to... but yeah. All right. So I was watching stuff, but like you didn't think like anything of value is going to happen on Sunday night, unless like a fire breaks out or a fight or the, like those are the only possibilities generally on a Sunday. But then the biggest story of all time happened. Well, I so I think everyone expected him to be fired. Yeah. I don't think people expect him to be fired when he was fired. No. I think people thought like this is inevitable, but they're gonna get they're gonna kind of slog through for another year or so and, and they we'll see plenty contract. of signs. They had just recently extended his yeah. contract and given the dreaded vote of confidence kind of yeah. where they're like, Oh yeah, he's doing a great job and all this stuff. So I think it was inevitable he's gonna be fired. Yeah. But I just think we all thought we would sense the decline, you know, like, yeah. hey, things aren't good. Ooh, there's some rumbling. Oh, as opposed to like, hey, he got an extension. Everything's good. Yeah. Hey, there's going to be a big concert at Dodger Stadium. He's going to introduce Elton John tonight. And they're like, you know what? This is where we draw the line. We're not going to let him introduce Elton John. It was very personal at that, right? He had ruffled enough feathers where they made it personal, which is his MO, right? Like, that's what happened with us yeah. was he made it very personal. And so... When you make your your you know bitterness or your rivalry with people that personal, they're gonna make it personal when they fire back, and you gotta watch out who you make an enemy of. And he made an enemy of the people that could yeah. decide his fate. And so in the end, they were like, "When's the best time to fire him?" They're like, "While he's getting ready to go to the Elton John concert, let's do it." It was all very spiteful and vengeful. Did you uh, now? Obviously. Very early on, you were kind of maybe the conduct, the Pied Piper of the anti chapek campaign. Yeah. Uh, long before he was CEO, he was lampooned. Before it existed. Day in, day out. Yeah. Right. Um, and I don't want to say you were first, but you were certainly early and you were certainly a very known adversary of him. Yeah. And it was no secret that he had yeah. directed people within the organization that you were an enemy. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So how long after he got fired did you start getting um, hate mail from anonymous email addresses pretending that they no, weren't Bob the, Chapek? The wild thing about t that 24-hour period was all the people who talked to me who had never spoken to me before, people in the company yeah. in all different places who, like, people I know the existence of but, like, had never had contact with. People that, like, reached out and were like... You know, this is great. I hope you're, you know, I hope you're happy, blah, blah, blah. Like we're all, you know, the, the atmosphere here is very positive and this and that. And um, that was a cool 24-hour period. And we're still, what's amazing is the the recovery um, between us and the Walt Disney Company is, is still, you know, a year later, we're still patching things up. Uh, you know, th th there's so much damage was done that it's a long healing process. Yeah. I think, and I think for them, you know, for the Walt Disney Company alone, what we're going to talk about it is, you know, whenever you change regimes, it's a long healing process. There are so many, you are a mega corporation and so many of these things take time to put into motion that it could be years before several of these things are repaired in any way, right? Okay, even you bring Bob Iger back and, of course, the memes were like when, you know, Scar gets deposed in the Lion King and the they you know, nature starts healing again, yeah. as they say. Uh, Bob Iger, imperfect, I would say. But no one's perfect. Also, I think that there was a relief from people that, hey, a, an adult is back in charge, right? Somebody who is more savvy, somebody who is more shrewd. Mm. While What's he the... has a, plenty of shortcomings, yeah. I think people thought this sense of relief. And they thought, oh, it's going to be back to the way it was, which it wasn't, right? So things were still different because a lot of 
very highly qualified people had their feelings hurt and ripped apart and departed the company yeah. prior to Chapek being promoted. A lot so of you the have damage was done. You know, you have Kevin Kevin Mayer. Yeah. Uh, you know, we we have uh, Bob Staggs. Tom Staggs. Tom, Bob Staggs. Tom Staggs. And Tom Staggs was before losing. he was CEO, but but Bob right. threw him under the bus. Yeah. Right, you have all these people that are in that period leading up yeah. to it when they're sort of in the, uh, I don't know if Chapek was the last man standing from this group. I don't know how he uh, outmaneuvered these people because he doesn't strike you as someone who is shrewd, right? He strikes you as someone who probably you want working in your accounting department, yeah. someone who knows how to balance the books and make things happen, but Not he doesn't someone seem like someone who's in charge of creative people. You don't get the idea that he's a guy who's playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers. Yeah. Right? So it is surprising that that then we, you know, somehow he outlasts <laughs> Mayor and Stags yeah. in this whole thing and ends up yeah. Shockingly, I think shockingly, being named CEO, yeah. I think the only moment more shocking than him being fired was the moment when they announced he was CEO because you're like, no. Yeah. No, Bob Iger's dumb, The worst dumb, 24 hours. He's not that dumb. Bob, yeah. Bob Iger's not, not dumb, by the way. Well, the immediate think, assumption was like uh, the, the Asia parks were already closing, right? And so the immediate s- assumption was like Bob Iger's getting out while the getting's good. Right. Because this is going to – be a like look these are people these are millionaires in a multi-billion dollar corporation they're gonna be they're gonna know people you and i don't know right and they're gonna yeah. know things about the world before you and i do and it's very likely that a month before the parks closed i'm sure people in the walt disney company were talking about it you get handed a hand grenade and you're like here you go hold on to this i'm gonna yeah. walk out and go to the bathroom yeah. so they right. bob Iger, without a doubt knew something was up like knew yeah. like the forecast was not good for business and was like, I'm supposed to leave anyway. Disney Plus is launched. It's successful. I'm going out on top and, you know, I'm not going to put anyone I like in this situation. I'm going to put this doofus in charge and see what happens. And then I think the reason Bob Iger came back was his plan backfired, right? He put yeah. King Doofus in charge. And then somehow the company weathered the storm because as a credit to Bob Iger and the people that were under him who weren't Bob Chapek, I think the company beginning when when Iger came in and through the early 2010s built an organization that could weather that storm to their credit. And I think Chapek got to ride that wave that none of them knew would, would hold but he got to ride it, and then by the time the waves started crashing, no one realized um, that that Chapek had drained the rest of the ocean, like right. that he had already done enough things that were going to begin a downturn, whether it was what he was doing with the studio, what decisions were being made with Disney+, Plus, what budget cuts or, or decisions are made at parks and resorts, you know, closing the Disney stores, all these bad decisions – um, you know, uh, we're building up, but the thing, the, look, no one was paying attention to anything else. Cause, cause look, the stock market had its own mistake, which was putting all of the stock in a company, uh, letting that all ride on direct to consumer, believing that that was the only business that mattered currently, right. And evaluating the value of a company purely on the, the health of their direct to consumer product. And that was a mistake. And then, of course, what 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 hurt him in the end was then finally the direct to consumer Disney Plus finally started to look like it wasn't going to do well. Yeah, or it wasn't going to return a profit in five years, which it was su- supposed to, right? Um, well, it's funny because that's kind of what he built things on, and yeah. the mistake was uh, the the first big crack in the armor to the general public, not to the people that follow the company day in out day out like us, yeah. but to the general public, the first. Like chink in the armor was the Scarlett Johansson, yeah, the way he handled studio and Hollywood mm-hmm. people, and so basically their contracts were kind of an old fashioned studio style contract where yeah. you get paid based on box office streaming, not factored in as much. And Scarlett Johansson felt, and her represent representation felt, she was yeah. getting a raw into the deal. And there was an opportunity there for Disney to work with them, I'm sure. Yeah. And it turned into litigation, right? And a very public fight. Very public fight. I think 
that you can make a case for being Hollywood savvy, maybe being the number one requirement for the next CEO of the Walt Disney yeah, Company. Yeah, you have to be. Um, because of things like this. And the studio is bombing. They're just they're just dropping bombs left and right, right? Now, they've had some success with some Marvel. They just had their worst Marvel movie they, of all they their weren't biggest failure. They were though, right? Like, into yeah. 2019, like, there were mistakes made with Star Wars, sure. Like, Solo was was a, a huge bomb. Um, but, you know, Marvel's at its height, right? We're talking Endgame, yeah. Infinity War and Endgame. Right. Um, you know, the Star Wars movies, no matter what critically people would say, still made money. Making money. Um, the, the mainline movies, at least, right? Sure. And uh, even the animation, all that's still doing well at this point. The bombs don't come until more recently, but you have to remember that's stuff that's put in motion already when Correct. Chapek is in charge, right? So, like, even – look, you can't hold Bob Chapek responsible for – Pixar, the eggs that Pixar was laying during this period, right? Yeah. Where on Onward did not do well and was yeah. probably impacted a and lot that by was COVID. Under creation, under Iger, right? Like, sure. Look, the, the Pixar problems go back to John Lasseter, right? Like, right. look, we're not going to talk about John Lasseter's right. character as a human being. That's a different thing. But as a creative, John Lasseter clearly, yeah. Creatively. Clearly was the guy who, like, you came in with your, you have 75% of a brilliant idea for a movie. And you screen it, or you or you do the storyboards with John. I think John's strength always was like what Walt Disney's strength was, where like his creatives come to him, and then Walt would have like the 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 whipped cream, right? The whipped cream right. and the cherry on top. Be like, you know, this is fantastic, but what if you did this, this, and this? And that's that was what John was good at was seeing what was the one missing piece of the puzzle. Like you were almost there, but John could see what would put the movie over the top. For as long as I can remember, as a shareholder anyway, the big boat anchor for the Walt Disney Company has been ESPN, mm. right? ESPN, yeah. ABC News are these pieces that they've always said they're gonna they gotta sell these off. The debt from look Bob Iger for as much as you want to say he built this company, Bob Iger bought a lot of this company, right? He just bought things that were successful businesses yeah. and brought them into a large uh, company. But you know the the Fox deal saddled. The company with a lot of this debt, yeah. that was probably uh, – he probably won a mulligan on that if he could do it again, right? Mm. The Even now that what they just now bought the rest of Hulu off of Comcast, yeah, which is probably bad timing for them. Uh, there are a lot of things that are correctable if you could go back in the past. You can't stop a pandemic from – you know, as a yeah. leader of the Walt Disney Company, you can't stop the pandemic. No, but nobody can say, oh, I had a bulletproof plan for this. I would say yeah. Universal weathered the pandemic better than Disney because they own the cable company, yeah. right? And the cable – who was doing better during the pandemic than the cable company who could up yeah. your internet speed so that your Zoom calls didn't yeah. skip around and could you could get more content or, and stream movies at home? Or the theme park yeah. operator who only for the first 60 to 90 days has to pretend to be safe and then at that point just opens the floodgates and lets yeah. as many people in the park as, as possible. Right. Yeah, that's not you know, true. No, it that yeah. that's what happened. I'm sorry. Yeah. I I'm not gonna mince words here. Universal, like, and was it a bad business decision? No. As a human being, is it unethical? And and did you kill some people? Probably. You know, like that Universal just was like, you don't need a reservation, just come on in. Like, well, yeah, that's a problem because look how crowded your park is and COVID is still very much a thing and you're yeah, they were yeah. a little less cautious than others, I would say. They were cautious at the beginning, but then yeah. by the fall, they were like, nah, all that, right. That's true. But, I mean, aside from that, yeah, they're, when people say that their company was doing better out of the pandemic, yeah. look at Disney has ESPN. Well, all the sports are canceled. Yeah. Right? Nobody's – live sports is not a thing all of yeah. a sudden. You know, you have a, a movie studio. You can't make movies. Yeah. You can't release movies to theaters. Hmm. You can't – you have theme parks. You can't do – Right, like these are like everything that Disney did well. They didn't have a hedge against it. Yeah. Where Universal, they're like at the end of the day, anybody who's consuming content is using. Yeah. I mean, not that everybody that has cable is using Comcast, but a whole lot of they them at least are. had segments that made money. Right. They had segments that were not only surviving but were thriving. Yeah. Under these conditions. Yeah. So, you know, to have someone like Bob Chapek. It's hard to give a fair evaluation of the dollars and cents of what he yeah. did because he was cast into this environment with a pre-existing business model. 
but I that think needed what, to be changed. What says everything you need to know is I think it was clear. Like my what 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 I remember sitting there like two weeks into the closure. I remember sitting there and thinking, what if this is the worst thing that ever happens to the Parks and Resorts in that? Like, think, like, I know this guy, right? I have covered this man for five years as Parks and Resorts, is the, right. v, is the man in charge of all Parks and Resorts. I know this guy well and what he's going to do. And two weeks into that closure, it, it dawns on me. I'm like, what if this is the opportunity for them to cut every last thing they ever wanted to cut and hit the reset button on every policy and program they ever wanted. And he's the guy who wanted to do that, right? He's the man, you know, they were supposed to launch a paid fast pass service. Um, I think essentially two weeks, three weeks after the closure, we knew it was supposed to happen in Galaxy's Edge. The Galaxy's Edge rides were going to be the first two to have them. Um, that was coming and it was coming quickly. We knew it was happening. And then the closure happened. And it's like, well, what's going to happen with that? Well, it's, I thought it was obvious and it clearly was that paid fast pass, they're just going to they're going to come back with it. Then they reopened and didn't have it. But then it wasn't too long after that, that you know, Lightning Lane and Genie and all that uh, reared their ugly heads, right? And Genie um, was a thing that we knew about before Bob Chapek it was announced, took over as yeah. CEO, right? Genie, yeah. exi- Bob Iger, if yeah. you don't like Genie, it was certainly greenlighted by him at some point. Yeah. So, I mean, we could say that he's the, he's the savior of the white knight or whatever riding yeah. in, but, I mean... Let's talk about it. Yeah, he, he's like I said, he's not well, perfect. Blood on and his I, hands for Chapek, right? Like he's oh, yeah. that. That's his fault, without doubt. Him being in charge of Parks and Resorts for five years, mm-hmm. and what he did as CEO, that's all on Bob. I- Bob Iger's hands are bloodied from that, without a doubt. Look how long it took to get trams back. Yeah, obviously we're never getting Tables in Wonderland back. No dining plan. You're never getting free fast. Yeah, you're getting dining back. plan back, but in a modified format. That you know, makes getting, money. Yeah, it makes it's money. It's a paid service. So, but all these things that, you know, the trams, is, come on. That took way too long. That took way took too way long. way too long. What? Three years? Yeah. Three plus for years? For Epcot and Studios, yeah. Yeah, for Epcot and Studios, it's, you know, that's unforgivable. Four yeah. years almost. Yeah. I mean, some of that's definitely, um, like, they didn't – there were certainly plans for if Walt Disney World was closed for a day or two, right? Like, the, the, yeah. there were plans for that. There were never plans drawn up. No one had – there was no circumstance they could think months. of to be closed for months, right? And so, like, I've talked about it before, like, reopening the hotels. No one really knew what to do. Like, I think they went around and cleaned the rooms, but no one thought, like, do we need to run the – do you need to run the water? So my favorite thing was, you know, we, we did uh, what – almost two years of hotel reopenings, Yeah, I would say. And from the first one to the last one, actually, they probably got better by the last one or two. But I remember like going into those rooms and turning that shower on and black, just black coming out for like for, for like a minute and then it would finally run through. But certainly someone could have thought of that. And, and like, look, in July of 2020, that's not a thing I'm upset about, right? Like, you know, we just got through this horrible yeah. thing and blah, blah, blah. When we get to like the 2021 hotel reopenings, then you're like, well, you're a functioning business again. And you've now done this several times. And I'm sure you have listed complaints from guests where they're like, my sink, my tub is all black. My shower's all black, blah, blah, blah. But like no one ever learned. No one figured out. And the same, that's what happened with the trams, right? It's like no one knew what happens when you leave trams sitting out in the open for that long. Yeah. And yeah, there, there's, but, but again, multi-billion dollar corporation, is there an excuse at that point? Like, you, you know what it's going to cost to get them back online. Just, just do it. You had 26 billion in, in cash in the bank yeah. when this happened. You can't spend a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, get, I'm overestimating it. It can't, I mean, who knows? They're a big company. They, they get overcharged a lot, but yeah. um, I can't imagine it costs much more than that to get the trams back up and running. Yeah. You know, staffing early, I understand staffing problems, but they were long past those staffing problems eventually. And now here we are. It's almost 2024. It'll be 2024 in a couple of weeks here. <laughs> and, watch. I only love and, when I, I, do the the, the 15th, I do the same the thing where I always like, I end up looking at the time, like not um, even the date. Like, <laughs> and and pretty much everything's real. Things that aren't reopened, I can think Park Fair. There's a lot of things. Not what, what, back. 
I'm thinking a re- restaurant. Is Park Fair restaurant, the only restaurant? Park Fair is the only sit down. Yeah. That didn't return. There are a lot of stores, mostly at Hollywood Studios, that never came back. Right, the store at the towards the exit of. Uh, Launch Bay, the store at the exit of Launch Bay, the store across the path, the mm-hmm. in character, that little store. Um, stage one near Muppet Vision never came back. Voyage of Little Mermaid. Uh, wonderful shop, Voyage of Little Mermaid. It's a wonderful shop across from that, which is now the Santa Meet and Greet. At least they're using it for something, thank God. Um, like a lot of stuff, a lot of little stuff at studios. The, that little store at the entrance of Animal Kingdom never came back. That was it. I forgot Outpost or whatever the hell that store was called. Yeah. Um, that didn't come back. And obviously, we lost a ton of entertainment. We lost the citizens of Hollywood. That's horrible. An iconic, seemingly untouchable thing in that park. Um, that was that and the Grand Floridian Society Orchestra. Two things that probably should have been staples of those places forever. Lost. Lost. To time, yeah. <sighs> Sad days. Mm-hmm. At the same time, building new attractions. <laughs> Tron only took five years. Runaway Railway, I guess that was an I really kind of came out when Iger was still CEO. At the, the first but that's time, that's Chape- So, so that was a Chapek. Uh, it's decision, a Chapek. It is because the original ride was not Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. It was the Great Mickey ride, and it was a ride through. Mickey's greatest moments, which is, I think, what people wanted, right? And you certainly could have ended that ride with the new shorts, right? That's fine. No one would have cared. But it was a very Chapek and and Lumbiger in there, too, or a thing to be like, oh, I want to promote what my stuff is. And my stuff is this Mickey Mouse. This is the Mickey Mouse we promote now. Let's do this Mickey Mouse, right? And that's what happened with Galaxy's Edge, right? It started as it was, it was a land themed to Endor and Tatooine. Right, you could have went to the actual cantina in Moss Eisley. You could have went to a dinner show in Jabba's palace. You could have built droids and lightsabers somewhere in in on Tatooine in Moss Eisley. Right? Yub nub fireworks you, every night. You're not wrong. Um, you would have then went to Endor and rode the speeder bike ride, which had this fantastic finale where fireworks are bursting overhead and the Empire has been defeated and you exit through the village while the yub-nub celebration is going on, right? Doesn't that sound great? Yeah, but then someone got in Bob Iger's ear and goes, well, what if we built the land and it was only themed to your Star Wars? And he's like, my Star Wars? Wow. I like letting people mm. make their own stories. That sounds cheaper. Right, they did a lot of this. Like you create thing. your own thing. Yeah. Right. You you are in charge of this story. You're in this place to exist as a role player and create your own adventure. I think people tried to talk. Look, I look. Sometimes even the best creative people have ideas that sound cool, but then don't connect. Right. And I think there were a lot of people in the Lucasfilm camp, and a lot of people at WDI who thought that was what everyone wanted. Right. And I don't. I don't know that that was the problem, right? The problem was that you picked the new trilogy, not really knowing how well eight, eight and nine were going to connect, and if they were, like you had episode episode seven came out in the middle of all that, and you were like, "Oh, good, people like this, we're all right." Um, but then you you, you kind of sabotaged yourself with with eight and nine, um, which we can argue about, right? Like I like episode eight, I hate episode nine. Other people feel the opposite. Some people like neither of them. Some people hate that whole trilogy. Uh, but nonetheless, the mistake was made, right, in that you didn't give people the Star Wars they expected, right? And I'll never forget, I took my parents in the summer of 2019 to Disneyland to see Galaxy's Edge. And we walk out of the land for the first time. And I go to my mother. I say, what did you, you think of it? She goes, I don't know. I was expecting something else. I go, what? She goes, I don't know, but not that. And that's my mother's not a Star Wars fan, but she has – a preconceived notion of what Star Wars is. And I don't think for most people, unless you were a super hardcore fan that watched like the animated series and things like that, I don't, I think it was very hard to be excited other than like for Rise of the Resistance. I think it was very hard to be excited for everything else going on in that land. Like they missed the mark. There is no doubt yeah. that, you know, Galaxy Edge is not a failure, I would say, but they definitely made several decisions that missed the mark. And that's, you know, that, that that's the same problem they made with Runaway Railway, where they, they got tunnel vision as to, well, our, the Disney that I create is the best Disney. And instead you forgot that, yeah, but, like, that's not the only thing that... Star Wars has not always 
Star Wars is not only the current trilogy and it never will be. And Mickey Mouse is not ever, to everyone, just the current series of Mickey Mouse cartoons, right? It is several, both of those things are several generations of very different things. And each of those things is important to different people. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this, that Galaxy's Edge, especially at Disneyland, it doesn't feel like a must go in every time I'm in, no. in the park, right? I go to Disneyland, I'm maybe half the time I'll go into Galaxy's Edge. It doesn't seem like a thing that you're like, I have to go back here. Yeah. I have to go in here. Yeah. And I think part of that is because their story doesn't connect with my Star Wars experience. Yeah. And I think you thought the Galactic Star Cruiser at least felt like Star Wars, I think. I obviously didn't have the opportunity to do that. But I do see in merchandise releasing things that appeal to people that are a totally different audience than me, right? Yeah. I wore the Star Wars belt to school when I was a kid, right? And I had the Death Star you know, where you had, I had the trash compactor with the little pieces of Nerf in it, right? Yeah. It's a totally different Star Wars than people who are wanting to buy a legacy lightsaber hilt for some guy from a video game I've never played, yeah. right? Where they are leaning into yeah. the cartoons and the video game yeah. people and the First Order and Kylo Ren and yeah. who is, I'm sorry, not the same terrifying figure that Darth Vader was for kids no. growing up when I was growing up, yeah. right? Where he's a guy who is... They show an emotional arc with him, and in the later, in the later, like Star Wars, they do show an arc with Anakin Skywalker and his transformation and Darth Vader and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. When I was a kid, Darth Vader struck terror into any kid, yeah. you know, and nothing in that land strikes terror into me. That's fine. I don't need to go there and be, feel like Darth Vader is going to capture me. But I felt like that sort of legacy, yeah, uh, you know original Star Wars mm. would have been easier to build an identifiable, uh, you know, park land with. I, and, I and think I'm it was shocked a starting, they did what they did. Look, the, I think Endor and Tatooine were a good starting point, and then they could have been like, well, the next phase. What if they build just like the area where Rise of the Resistance is? What if that was just that, and that's another planet, and it's just this little outpost area with that ride? And that way, every you, you have something for everyone, right? You spent... You know, you built this this unbelievably great e-ticket ride, right? You have that. Are you looking at my shirt? Yeah. What's you enjoying my shirt? Yeah. I thought it was a Buccaneers flag there. No, Bay. it's not. Nick gave um, you some Tom Brady merch. It's the movie flag, isn't it? Or no? It's red. No, the movie flag is black. Oh, it's just the, the talking skull. I forgot. You you could add something for everyone, right? And that's what I think they lost sight of is building stuff for everyone. Building stuff that speaks to everyone. And instead you went you doubled down and you went all in on new Star Wars. And then on top of that, once you went all in, you then, you know, started to be timid about your decision and were like, well, um, you know, everyone sat in that room when they they rolled out, you know, WDI R and D. Rolled out a walking alien animatronic, yeah. And they're like, "You guys going to buy this?" And everyone, I think, I think everyone at WDI, WDI thought that, well, Disneyland's going to buy it, and if Disneyland buys it, then Walt Disney World will feel guilted and they'll buy it. And then I think Disneyland, you know, management stood up first, and that meeting was like, "We're gonna, you know, we're we're we we don't think there's a return on this. We're gonna we're gonna skip this." And then I think that's all Disney World management needed to hear to be like. You know, same. Yep. <laughs> and like that all died. The reputation system died. Um, all the droids, all of it, it all died. Um, and Bob Chapek, of course, is not the right. Cause in those cases, right. When a park, when a, when an individual Disney resort has bad management, there have been times where there was good management above them who were just kind of like, you should, you should do this. Right. Like here's a, a famous, a famous thing. Avengers campus, right. Avengers campus is developed, under the Bob Chapek regime, which is why it's a piece of garbage. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's hideous that Spider-Man ride has connected it's with bad. no one. Like if it wasn't for the entertainment, the thing would be a total uh, indescribable flaw. And for the giant chicken sandwich. I like the giant chicken sandwich. But that restaurant was poorly designed. Not, not a knock on the culinary team. They did a good job. The food's good. Um, but uh, nonetheless... Right, these ugly ass Avengers campuses were built, and in the midst of that, Josh Tomorrow gets the job. At, you know, whether I, I think he might have been Disneyland Resort president at the time. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he was in charge of the whole division. I don't remember when 
the decision was made. They built that the R and D built that Stuntronic figure, the Spider Man yeah. that flies through the air. That was not built to go in the land. That was not a thing. Josh Tomorrow saw that and went, "We we need to have that. That needs to be a thing." That was added later. That was not an original intent, right? And that's where that's a case where management up here. Like this is not – WDI R&D is working on something that's not intended for this thing. But here's a manager over here who has a good head for this business and he's like, well, this is this is great. We have to have this. And it's the one jaw-dropping moment from that it's land. The, it saved it. It absolutely right. is the only thing of any relevance in that land. Look, I know like people like the meet and greets and stuff and I, I do think that speaks to a segment of people. But without a doubt, you cannot tell me that the Spider-Man Stuntronic is not the highlight, right? You people destroy that walkway and they, they destroy that walkway because the land's designed like garbage, right? Right. Cause there's just this narrow alley up against Mater's junkyard jamboree <laughs> across from the Spider-Man circuit city building. Um, <laughs> Spider-Man bought an abandoned circuit city uh, and put his logo up on it. Um, there's just this narrow hallway that was not designed for shows and people fill that thing in to the point where cast members have it's to go out there yeah. and like hold people against the fence because it's like we gotta have a walkway here. And it's the only and then people, you know, my favorite moment is that show ends. People do not people do not go towards the Spider-Man ride. They turn around and go back out into the performance corridor and like towards Cars Land or towards whatever street. Yeah. They all just go the other way, away from Avengers campus. They just depart. Um, but yeah, like, good I, management can can solve a lot of those problems. And then when when you have bad management encouraging you to not spend money, then you make bad decisions like, you know, not building the transport ride with the the um, oh god, I'm gonna forget the name of that. The e e Ely is Ely. Yeah, I think it's called the Ely. The the creature you were supposed to ride around Galaxy's Edge. Oh yeah. Um, there was a. Um, there were stalls. There were like creature stalls at one point. And you went into that area and that's where you would load. You'd all get on the back of this big animatronic creature vehicle and he'd walk you and you're sitting on top and he'd walk you around the land, around the perimeter of the land. And he just march you around. And that got cut. The live entertainment got cut. They cut those shows, right? Remember the grand opening weekend? They did all that entertainment, like Ray fighting with... Uh, Kylo Ren, yeah. the lightsaber battle, the X wings flying the over. X wings. That was all cut. That was the reason that was all developed was to be permanent, and instead it all got cut away. And the only time it's ever been done is that opening weekend, and that's it. I went. I did not work for the company at the at this point in time when Galaxy's Edge opened. Yeah. Right. So I happened to go to studios the night they were having their big like media preview. Yeah. And so we're sitting at baseline tap house and you can hear a big rumble mm -hmm. from inside galaxy's edge. And there go the X wings flying away. Yeah. It was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah. And to take some moment like that and make it super temporary. Yeah. Felt like being robbed. Right. You're like, Oh, they can yeah. do this. Yeah. Then why don't you? Another great Josh tomorrow example. Disneyland Paris, and we're going to go back to Avengers Campus, right, which shouldn't have any highlights, but we have a couple. They do a drone show for the media for the grand opening of Avengers Campus in Disneyland Paris. Josh Tomorrow's there. All the executives are there. They do this drone show. The, everyone's blown away. Everyone's blown away. And Josh uh, looks at Natasha Rafalski, who's the president of Disneyland Paris, and I, I don't know exactly what was said, but something to the effect of, this should be a permanent thing, is said. And so we went and saw the drone show. You can watch it here on the channel if you want. Um, look, I love the Paris 30th drone show. It was fantastic. It was a highlight. But that Marvel drone show, I'm not, I don't even like Marvel, is unreal. It's a giant Groot walks across the sky and, and spaceships fully formed of light fly across the sea. It's unbelievable. And it's another one of those cases where again it's like, but yeah, you did this thing for the media and, and like like your X Wing story, but but good management comes in and is like, no, this is too good. This should be a thing.
the X Wings immerse you in the story of the place, mm-hmm. right? Like I, I get it, right? A really cool drone show, but that's a you're saying I'm watching like a drone show. The X Wings just. I don't just, need that. What's that? I don't need that though. I yeah. need what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Something that feels authentic. That's Star Wars. Yeah. This, I, a spaceship needs yeah. to fly over. Yeah. I, I'm sure it's difficult, right? I think they had some place out in the parking lot they had to. Yeah. These things like the size of an SUV or something. I don't know. But they certainly could have done smaller ones that just every once in a while went by or, um, you know, if they fi- – Eric, they figured out how to make a robot man fling himself across a rooftop safely in front of guests, not far from guests, right? Yeah. So if they could figure that out, what can't they? Right. Right? The limit is your imagination. Like drones, it's an existing technology. It's a refined technology now. There, you could certainly find a permanent solution to make spaceships fly over that. Hell, even if it's one, even if it's just one, and every once in a while you see this one ship fly by, the immersion is created. It exists. People will – imagine being a kid and a spaceship flies over the Star Wars land. At that point, it's real. Eddie, Eddie Sato, great former Imagineer, just did an interview with. I don't remember what he was talking about, but he talked about immersion. And he's like, it's it's about the levels, right? And people, your brain will tell you the whole time you're in the land that what you're, this isn't real. You're not in space. You're not on some faraway planet. You're not there. And then it's the job of the space to convince you to still like fight your mind and be like, but you are, right? And so the moment is like, he's like, if you go pick something up and I think about like Galaxy's Edge, the original line of merchandise, I think about picking that up and there's nothing that says, you know, it doesn't say Star Wars on it. Like it's, it's a, sort of a beat up kind of ragdoll plush. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the movie. I'm, I'm really there, right? And that's what that spaceship would be for for you. Be like, yeah, it's not real. But then you, for a couple of seconds, you forget that it's a fantasy, and it's like there's a spaceship just flew over. That is the coolest thing I've ever seen. The uh, the first time. It, it, by the way, there's an opportunity for Universal to do the same thing with people riding broomsticks or something, you know. But the first time I went to, uh, yeah, went, the first time I went to the Harry Potter lands mm-hmm. at, at Universal, that's what struck me. Because at the time, it's like every gift shop I went to at Disney, they might have a few other yeah. things, but they all had a few core things that all of them had, right? Mm-hmm. The damn Rice crispy Treat, some ponchos, and like just a row of stuff that you like see in every gift shop. The impulse buys. What's that? Impulse buys. Yeah. And I went to Universal, and I go in these Harry Potter shops, and they don't have that. No. They're all very distinct from yeah. one another, and very well, their their branding is yeah. very, like, very low key. Mm-hmm. And I, to the point where I, we we went to a restaurant in Diagon Alley, and I said, you know, can I get a Coke? And she's like, Coke. she's like, it's a muggle drink. We have gilly water or pumpkin juice. Which, yeah. which do you want? Like, look, I wanted That's to great. drink Coke, but yeah. that was great. That was like, oh, they're committed to this, yeah, right. And Galaxy's Edge is kind of a lighter weight version of that. They're committed to it. To it, they're not as committed to it as they used to be. I think where no, every the, cast the, member was really like in yeah. the story. It's not sustainable. The right? guests really wore them down. Yeah, because in the beginning, it was like they wouldn't even say the word restroom. Like they had to say the refresher. refresher. Yeah, and then eventually, someone's like, look, like. Our audience is too dumb. <laughs> They're just our guests are too dumb. You have to stop. Like the bright, you're lucky if you get a bright suns or Tilda. I some I still say Tilda Spire when I leave like a store or something after a transaction. Yeah, and you could you could see the cast members like what <laughs> what like someone knows what the, no one says this anymore. What? Um, obviously we were a little off track of the Chapek. Being fired anniversary. Yeah. Well, we're talking about the guy that replaced but, him at Parks and Resorts. Yeah, but, yeah I think I it's know. important for context of what you can do versus what you do do. I think he said do do. I did. God, you're so awful. Um. So I guess let's just go division by division. Yeah. Since Chapek left, what's gotten better? What's gotten worse? What has room for improvement? What has stayed the same? So Parks and Resorts better. Better. Right, they they we are about to lose the park hopping restrictions. They got rid of the paid parking at resorts. Um, they're working on trying to fix the apps. Right, they're, there's all these new features and things to make it easier to see what your park reservations are, what's available. Um, they they've clearly listened. Right, they're clearly actually listening to their clientele 
Um, look, there are there are still problems, right? DVC stuff. We talked about the the cabin thing and and the Polynesian Tower. Um, you know, there's been some recent park additions that are great, some recent park additions that are not. Um, and I think we still need to come out the other side, uh, fully out the other side of the Chapek era to see what the parks are actually going to look like, right? Like Josh, you know, Josh has got to come through, Josh and his division have got to come through on those blue sky things. Those are promises at this point. Yep. Whether or not you want to say like this is what we're thinking of, there is a promise to do something in those spaces. There is a promise to do something big at Animal Kingdom. There is a promise to do something big at Magic Kingdom. And I think Josh is a smart man. He knows he is going to be judged by what happens with those projects. He's going to be judged by that Avengers multiverse ride. Those are the things he's going to be judged by, um, and they, you know, we have a long time probably until those things are done. But um, those will be the hallmarks of his time with the company. Yeah, I think they did. They fixed a lot of things that look. Some things that you, people don't like the app. Nobody likes the app. No. It is getting better, but these are things. Some of these things lag behind a ways because they're in development during someone else's yeah. regime. But they they did a lot of quick fixes, right? Here's a few quick here's a bunch yeah. of things that we're doing that people hate. Paid parking. What can we fix today? Well, then, yeah, what's something yeah. that we can just wave a wand today and fix yeah. without too much trouble? Paid parking. Like that that's a no-brainer. Right? That's an easy one. That win. was the moment where I'd like to say that's the moment where we like we were already pretty critical of Chapek, not in the way we are later. But it begins before that. But the moment, I think, where he becomes a joke, the moment when News Tonight every single Thursday has Bob Chapek jokes is when paid resort parking happens. Yeah. That was the moment that turned everything forever, right? And so the fact – they knew that. Right. They knew that. And so I'm sure when they had that meeting, when Josh had that first meeting when Bob Iger was back, the first thing he said was, we're going to get rid of paid resort parking. It's like the first thing we're doing. Right. Yeah. I mean, that was their differentiator, right? Yeah. You're like, hey, Disney Hotel is too expensive for me. Yeah. You go, oh, but look around. You're going to pay, you park, you want to stay at the Buena Vista Palace, they're by mm -hmm. Disney Springs, not a Disney resort. Yeah. You're going to pay a resort fee mm. and you're going to pay for paid parking. There's hidden costs, right? Yeah. You're staying at Disney and everything's included. Your transportation mm -hmm. while you're there is included. Your parking is included. You know, yeah. all these things. Uh, there's no resort fee. Mm -hmm. And, so that was how you could demonstrate, like, okay, we are expensive, but look at the value you get. Yeah, and I think that was an easy win for them to go. Okay, look, this is this has been a huge failure for us. This has been a PR disaster. Yeah, everyone hates us, and it's easy to point out that we are uh, more expensive now because the premium you pay for the Disney stay is is diminished. Yeah, uh, the value of that is diminished now. So that was a good, easy, quick win. I don't know why it's taken them so long. Uh, on the park hopping front, yeah, I think that's a little ridiculous that they they really need that much time to retool their operation. It didn't take them any time at all to tool the operation in the opposite direction, but to somehow go back to the norm seems yeah. to be taking way too long. Well, I think it's because they were like, well, we're going to do it with new ticket sales starting from this date, and the tickets begin on this date, right? And that was, you know, there may be things we don't see that that made life easier for them. Uh, to play devil's advocate, I I think they were like, we're going to announce this way in advance and you'll know by this date and such and such, you know, my, things have changed. My main criticism of the Disney Parks experience is that it really requires too much planning now. Yeah. Right? You have all these – I think there was something special about the experience of going to a park and maybe the discovery and not knowing – Let's say you're coming here for the first time. Yeah. There are people still coming here for the first time. We we forget that because we go all the time. Yeah. How cool is it when you discover something you didn't know about, something mm -hmm. unexpected? Heck, yeah. that guy from Barstool Sports came and thought he went to the new Star Wars ride and loved it because he didn't even know Galaxy's Edge was back there, right? How cool is it, though, to remember the first time that you saw something at Disney that you didn't expect to see or that you didn't know about? Yeah. Those are the things that keep me coming back yeah. is – what do the locals do, right? 
the locals are into like the resorts and stuff because there's still stuff you haven't done and haven't mm-hmm. seen there. Yeah. There's nothing in the parks you haven't seen or done really for the most part. So you have that. And when you have to plan every moment of your vacation with an app ahead of time and you yeah. go, oh, I got to do this 60 days before now and tap away as fast as I can and do all this stuff. That's an, it's annoying. Mm. It's not fun. And it makes it feel like this experience is not fair. Right? To me as a first timer, I'm paying the same amount of money that you're paying as a salty veteran. Yeah. You already have all the local knowledge over me, but now they've added all these layers of knowledge that I need, which mm-hmm. I, I don't know how to explain to my dad how to go to Disney World. If my dad were to call me and go, you know what? We're going to take a Disney vacation. Any pointers? I'm like, oh, God, Dad. First of all, you, you probably need a new phone. <laughs> That's it. Step one, you're going to need a new phone. Uh, and you're going to probably need something to charge that phone with because you're going to have your nose in it all day. Yeah. And by the way, Dad, you won't figure this out. You're not going to figure Even the interface of the app now is not intuitive at yeah, all. My there's a home button, a hamburger it. button, and a plus button, and there's yeah. no reason to rhyme as to what goes where. Yeah. And so, you know, Dad, you're going to have to do this. And do you, oh, well, I heard, I heard they have a new roller coaster. Yeah, so here's what you're going to need to do, Dad. On top of everything else I just explained, yeah. here's a whole separate system. There's a whole separate layer of things you're yeah. going to have to know how to do. Nonsense. So you've already made your park pass. And God knows if you really have it because you might have not seen – you might have seen where it said you're all set and didn't scroll down <laughs> to see that you actually have to check one more box yeah. and hit accept on that too God. before you're really all set. Yeah. So not only do we have this, Dad, but we have uh, – if you want to ride you know, the new roller coaster at Epcot – you're going to have to wake up at 7 and do that. He's like, but I booked everything else on the app ahead of time. Why can't I book this ahead of time? Right. I don't know, Dad, yeah. because that's what they've decided. They want to make sure that you're really going there. Yeah. You know? And he goes, well, wait, I wake up at 7, and then what do I do? Well, you got to navigate this thing. Yeah. And what's it do? Well, it makes you pick who's going to be in your party. Well, it's showing me 15 people because you helped me join with the whole family and everybody. Do I check yeah. all of them? I don't know, Dad. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, Dad. And then... You know, oh, one of them clicked. One of them clicked before I could click, and now I'm in some boarding group with people I don't know. Do I have to meet up with them before I go? No, Dad. If you're in that boarding group, you can go. Well, what time do I go? Well, you go. I I don't know. Yeah. You just kind of estimate based on expertise how long it takes to get to boarding group 62. Yeah. Okay. Well, then what if I'm late? Well, at Epcot, no problem because they'll pretty much let you in all day long if you've been called. Okay, cool. I will do that when I ride Tron and Row. Oh, no, Dad, because if you don't show up in that one-hour time frame, they'll turn you away. And he's going to go, you know what? I think I'll just go play golf. Yep. And he's not wrong. That's my frustration. Yeah. And that, being driven by the app is part of what our society has done, yeah. but the company has done a poor job with this by yeah. tying things to the app that don't need to be tied to that. Yeah. Look, I think it's very convenient to say, I want to eat at this restaurant. I'll click here. Here's the restaurants. That works fine. That's, that's fine. That's fine. The rest of the experience, yeah. you don't need to put everything in there. Right? When you take boarding groups and Lightning Lane and Genie away from it, mm-hmm. which is what will happen when you go to, let's say, Paris or Hong Kong, right. th- those are such easy parks to do. It's like I don't have to think about any of that stupidity. Although they did – they kind of did a boarding group thing for um, – it's so different there. They kind of do the, – the standby pass is kind of a boarding group system for character meet and greet. So like if you want to meet um, Lena Bell or you want to go to the Playhouse in the Woods, like there's some of those things you do have to do it for. But in general, it, it's considerably easier and it's amazing how much more carefree the park experience is uh, in those places. Right. I don't know. Tokyo, forget it. Tokyo is a million processes you have to know also. And some of that you can say, get with the times, right? This is the world we live in. Tell your dad to get with the times. It's not intuitive. But even for anyone If it were more intuitive, I would be better off with it. But I think too much of it depends on this. And too much of it depends. You know what? When I go to Epcot, I don't even bother waking up and get a boarding group anymore. I I haven't done any. Maybe do the one o'clock if I'm. Yeah. Thinking about it. Nana yeah. did it for, we did a training day last week. Nana did it for everyone. I was like, all right, we'll go ride. It was the first time. And she's like, how many times have you been on this now? I was like, I stopped counting because I haven't been on this in months because I don't wake up at 7 a.m. and think of doing this. Right. Yeah. I mean, why can't I put my name in the lottery two weeks ahead of time when I make my park reservation? And they can draw yeah. at random at 7 a.m., right? And just let me know. They can yeah, say, right? hey, we filled a hopper with... With mm-hmm. 20,000 people that want to ride this ride yeah. tomorrow. 
or in three weeks or whenever. Yeah. You can put your name in that hopper anytime. And at 7 a.m., the hopper picks the names. Yeah. Why do I have to sit there and, and, and spam a button? Yeah. You're making it come down to like almost skill. It is skill. I know no, that you is. are oh, more skilled than the normal person at getting a boarding group. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I just. I've only missed twice ever. And it's yeah. arguable. And it was both rise. Mm-hmm. And it was way back. Yeah. When that was a, a big problem. But yeah. All right. So Parks and Resorts have gotten better. They're on the road. Studio. They're on the road. Way worse. <laughs> way worse. Yeah, it's it's. It, I mean, we're still feeling the effects of that era, right? Like, did he forever destroy the box office for animation? Did he? We have to find out, right? We're we're still seeing it. We're seeing that animation isn't doing great. Although, um, I don't know what did the Adam Sandler? Can you look up the the Adam Sandler animated movie has done well? So I wonder, are other studios doing well? And I'm, we talk about Super Mario. I'm not putting Super Mario in this conversation because that is a multi-billion dollar franchise that has existed for 40 years before the movie came out, right? So we're not playing that game with Super Mario. What's it's the a different new Adam thing. Sandler thing called? Leo? Leo? It's a yeah. Netflix thing. Oh, is it? Oh, so yeah, it's just it's doing really well on streaming. Release. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, look, and there have been several movies since we kind of came, kind of came out of the COVID pandemic yeah. that have hit like a billion dollars. Yeah. There have been a bunch of hits out yeah. there. Uh, probably not They're as not many Disney. as people would like uh, on the animated front. Yeah, the animated movies do well. But what was this? This was the first year not, in um, since in over ten years that Disney didn't have a billion dollar film. Yeah, yeah, uh, but not That's counting not. the COVID years, not counting like twenty and twenty one, I believe. Right, um, and I suppose we don't count Avatar two. I think we do. Do we? I think so. Okay. Well, look it up. I don't know. I think you do. I think that that's why this is the first year, because that was last year. Oh, there's that 2022. So I think they yeah. had, I think they... Yeah, it was 2022. So they right. have one for 2022, yeah. Yeah. And maybe there might have been another one even. There, I, I think there were. came out this, uh, that year. There yeah. have been some successes. It just seems like a lot of things that they put a lot of hype into yeah. have bombed, right? Luca, I think, didn't connect with people. I don't hear anybody uh, talk about Luca being one of their favorite. I'm, I'm there, I'm Onward. Sh- there's something for everybody in Pixar. So yeah. there are people that will love Onward, these movies. Soul, Onward, Luca. Soul, Luca. A more lukewarm response than you are used to with a Pixar movie, right? Where, again, like you said, there are definitely people that love it, but it's not like when you bring up Inside Out and, like, nine of ten people are like, oh, my God, or Up. Yeah. Where Up is ten of ten people, right? There yeah. is, I've never met a human being that won't tell you they don't love Ratatouille and Wally and Up, right? Yeah. That doesn't happen. Right. Um, so, look, they're going back to the Frozen Bank for a few more movies. Makes sense. Yeah. Wish has, I've heard. Tanked. I've heard nothing from, like, social media, friends, anything about yeah. Wish. The And it was promoted a lot. Yep. It's promoted a lot. But That's people, I think, just think, like, Look, I'm I'm a pretty big Disney fan, but even I'm like, well, I'm gonna watch it on Disney Plus, or I'm gonna watch it on an airplane. Like they've even yeah. conditioned me to not go to the theater for those at this point. Well, Disney Plus has liquidated. That's our next one. Yeah, Disney Plus totally destroyed. It's a failure, right? Undoubtedly, like even the Marvel, like they've they've now even ruined Marvel. Like right. even the Marvel shows don't matter anymore. Where. What a turnaround. And now Star Wars is the thing, right? Like Star right. Wars is what people have Disney Plus for. And now Marvel's the thing where they're like, I don't know if I need this anymore. Yeah. I mean, you could say that. And th- they've removed a lot of titles from Disney Plus. And I'm, look, yeah. I have a Disney Plus subscription. Same. But I don't open Disney Plus very often anymore. I watched Loki and I haven't opened it since. I don't think. Oh, behind the, I watched Behind the Attraction, but that's really made for us. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. I, I watched part of the second season of Loki, and then yeah. I got kind of disinterested. Or mm. but actually, the first episode was it was too many like too many like uh, those nesting dolls, you know, too many things, stories within a story within a story. Was I don't know. I was like, all right, I, I I'm not in a mental place today to to deal with this, and I haven't been back. I'm sure it's good. Um, most of the Marvel ones I thought were pretty good. Yeah, um, most of them. They started strong, right? WandaVision and Loki were both tremendous, and then I liked Hawkeye. Then, so so did I. Yeah, and I I actually also liked Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I know I'm in the minority with that. Yeah, I thought it was, it was okay. at least good. Sure. And then after Hawkeye, they just 
you know, off the cliff. Just, oh, no. Yeah. You know, Miss Marvel. And, and Nope. I'm. Well, Miss Marvel, again, we're not the audience, right? This no is one for, was the audience. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. But I feel like all the stuff. I've liked pretty much all the Star Wars stuff. I didn't like. Yeah. No, Even I liked Andor, right? I liked Andor. Everyone was like, why is it? Me, me number one on that list, right? Missed, I am the yeah. a- anti-Rogue One man. Mm-hmm. No one else hates that movie apparently but me. And I'm like, <laughs> I am not watching this Andor series ever. And then everyone's like, oh, my God, Andor. And I watched I it. I was, like, was great. I was like, oh, come on. It's it's fantastic. I was yeah. so mad. I was like, this is really good. Yeah, I really liked Andor. Yeah. I liked uh, – all the star, I think all the Star Wars series. I, I didn't People love like Ahsoka like everyone else did. Yeah, I liked Ahsoka, but I didn't like. People it as are much lukewarm as... on Boba Fett. Yeah, I like them all though. Yeah, I agree. I, I, they're at least, they're you, at least lukewarm good. on Boba Fett. Come on. That People was... work because they're like, oh, it's just more Mandalorian, but it's disguised as a Boba Fett series. I'm like, they're not wrong. I remember like the first time I ever knew about Star Wars outside of the original trilogy mm. was I, I was way into Boba Fett. Yeah. Right. I remember the rocket launcher getting recalled because it would choke the kids. The original toy, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Um, my brother's band had a song called Slow Dance with Boba Fett back in the 90s. Um, and the book was The Mandalorian Armor. It was like, you know, those Star Wars licensed books that yeah. people were writing, cranking out. And and some of Book of Boba Fett, you know, is involved in that. And yeah. I've always been into that. So when they had The Mandalorian show and then Book of Boba Fett, I was all about Obi-Wan. Uh, that Obi Wan Kenobi, I thought was pretty great. good. Yeah, I think they've done well. I just don't. But know there's, that there's nothing enough, beyond that. There's just not a. Not there's nothing me. else going on on Disney right. Plus. Yeah, I don't know what the winning formula is, but they better find it. I don't think they're going to. And I don't know. I don't know who we blame this on, right? Maybe it was just ill conceived from Jump Street. Which, I, which is, you could say, is the either. entire industry misjudged what to do. Right, because like, look at look at HBO Max. What happened with that? They oh, you all, mean Max? Yeah. Because now I have a HBO. All, instead of upgrading the app, yeah. HBO Max to the Max, they I just have a dead app that's HBO Max, and I had to download another one that's yeah. Max. And they all they all bungled it. They all bungled it. Here's the thing: everybody knows a guy, right? That's like, oh, I'm cutting the cord. Oh, I'm cutting the cord. And like, I'm not giving the money to the cable company anymore. And then all of a sudden they're like, I got this app and I got that and I got that and I get everything I want. And I don't get the stuff I don't want and I don't have to watch that. You're, you're paying like, more. You're than paying you paid the for cable, cable company for your internet. They don't care. Yeah. And then you're paying. And now, like, I got YouTube TV. When I first got YouTube TV, it wasn't that long ago, yeah. five years ago, thirty nine ninety five. What is it now? Eighty. It's like eighty five dollars yeah. now a month. You know, and, yep. and more because I also get NFL Sunday ticket with it. Yeah. Uh, but you know now. I have Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN Plus, YouTube TV, Netflix, Max, Apple TV. Like I, I have no have idea what I it, do. Well, so it's like I get Apple TV free because I inevitably yeah. will buy like a new iMac or a new yeah, iPhone or something. Fair, and they give yeah. you a kickback. I have AT and T for my cell phone, so I think that's HBO Max that I get for free. Yeah. I have all these things at Paramount. I don't know how I know Paramount. I'm, yeah. I got, I went to Halloween Horror Nights. Here's three months of Peacock. I never mm. redeemed that. But at some point, I'm just going to let them all go, man. It's like, it's too yeah, much. I got rid of a bunch. It's too much. I think they had the formula right years before, 2011, 2012. I had a, a device, Google TV. Do you remember Google TV? Yeah. It was like, I had like a Sony um, Blu-ray player. Mm. And... It was internet connected and was connected the to the cable box. The little white box? Yeah. Yeah, I had that. And I would search for something. Yeah. I would search for a movie. I searched for The Great Outdoors. Yeah. And it'd be like, okay, here it is on some app. Here it is on Netflix, right? Netflix yeah. did exist back then. It's also going to be on TNT at, in three hours. Yeah. And here's, you know, and they'd give me like all the cool. places I could find it. It was. Yeah. To me, it was way more unified interface. They didn't interface. make enough money for them, though. Yeah, it was like a, yeah. a unified interface where I could do yeah. all these things. Now I don't have a unified interface. Mm-hmm. I just have this. I have an interface, but it's like I got to go into each thing and remember yeah. my password for it and all. I'm getting us off track because we're on a time crunch. Uh, so we're going to say Disney Plus is a fail. Yeah. Here's one that Chapek was the first one I remember hearing float this was gambling. Yeah. 
and now ESPN Bet. As long as it's they've done it. As long as it sticks they've with taken the a sports family, betting, I don't care. They've taken a family company, yeah, and they're in gambling. But they bought and, a sports company, and it sticks to the sports side, right? They're not opening casinos, and we, you know. We could have addressed that last week on the Walt rolling over in his grave. I wonder how he would feel about his company care. being involved in gambling. Because he, I think he'd look at it as like, yeah, we own ESPN, but people don't necessarily like. It's its own thing. People already think that your company has too much influence in things like college sports with ESPN yeah. and who gets into bowl games and all this other kind yeah. of stuff. Who gets their own network? Who's ESPN? A lot of people. I would blame them partially for destroying the Big 12 Conference and probably others, right? Because yeah. these schools are scrambling for their TV deals and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So you have this company who people already believe has an outsized influence in sports. Hmm. They're influencing sports, and yet they're a gambling platform. Mm-hmm. That's not a problem for anybody? Yeah, probably. Nobody thinks that's a problem? And look, in, in like I, there is a lot of the Walt Disney Company I care about. The arm I care the least about is going to be like ESPN and ABC. I don't... Whatever. I'd sell them off. Yeah, if they sell them off. I, yeah. I'll make it. We're going to have another episode. I think Jason wants to do one of the case for dismantling several arms of the Walt Disney Company. Yeah. And I'm I'm on board. Yeah. I can't tell you. Uh, I know that ABC spending a fortune building that new place in, like, lower Manhattan. Yeah. Um, that's billions and billions and billions of dollars, I'm sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how. I don't know what their plan is for making that back. I know they've. Kind of put ABC on the market and then took it off. Is that because nobody wants it or nobody mm-hmm. thinks it's as valuable as Disney thinks it is? Yeah. You know, they see some potential for growth or whatever. Yeah. Any other divisions we need to talk <laughs> talk about? You want to talk about any other divisions under Bob Iger, whether they've gotten better or worse since JPEG left? What other divisions are there? What I mean, consumer thinking? products? That's under Parks and it's Resorts? It's under Parks and Resorts, but I they don't... have... They have shopped Disney in the hand. They've continued yeah. to do the thing as they've always done it. They had the Disney store that I know. I mean, that's he made that worse for sure. They didn't need to get rid of all the Disney stores. That didn't need to be a thing. That was idiotic. That was I, a mistake. So I rarely went to the Disney store, and the last yeah. time I went to one, I, I wasn't into it, right? It was hard to go to the one here because the Florida Mall is a disaster. But Yeah. 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 So, but I felt like by the time that I really went in and looked at a few, they had been so kind of homogenized yeah. that it was just, it just felt like I was in like the yeah. airport gift shop for that's, Disney. That's yeah. also him, right? Yeah. He was cheaper. in charge of consumer products when they redid the Disney stores after they bought them back from children's plays. He killed it to begin with. So yeah, he put the thing, it, it's like he, he gave the dog poison and then took the dog out back and shot it eventually. He's like, well, guess the dog's sick. <laughs> yeah, you made it sick. So Bob Iger's leaving in, in 2026. He is guaranteed he's leaving. It's a good thing, I think. I he th- has to go, yeah. He has to go There's, for a million reasons. But I think he was the guy people thought would be the easiest one to bring back to fix the shape. They're not wrong. I don't think anyone else, I don't think there's anyone else you could have put in the situation at that moment. Right. Right. I don't think it was a mistake to bring him back. No. And I think he has tried his best. And I think it's the first time in his career at Disney that he does not have the magic touch because, you know, it's scorched earth. He came back and you, you got to plant the seeds and wait for something to grow on this, you know, this toxic dirt patch. Um, that that the f- previous guy created, but you also sold him the farm, right? So who do you think's being groomed? I I think Stags and Meyer come back. Yeah, I still think so. Like the only one of them is going to be. CEO. I like Josh, but he they're not moving him out of Parks and Resorts, so they're not diversifying his portfolio. So I don't think he's in do we mind. Think it yet. has to be a studio person. Someone from the studio, they're not Hollywood studios, person. guys. We need a studio person. I they're, know what that's they're some... everything, guys. Right? Because yeah. Tom worked at Parks and Resorts. He worked as CFO. Like Tom's seen a lot, and Kevin Meyer is like a great sort of next generation guy. Right? He is the brains behind the original impl- implementation of Disney Plus, which is not bad. They went off the cliff after that. I think they didn't have a good plan to continue the service. Um, and Kevin Meyer's proven in other organizations that he's a he's a hell of a hand to have. The two of them, I think, in an Eisner and Wells style partnership is what I want. So you don't think they're going to get someone from the studio side? No. You no, don't. because that's not 
especially in an age where the studio is doing so poorly, I don't think they see that as the driving force anymore. I think the, the it is it is to be ter- determined what the future of the Walt Disney Company looks like, but something big has to change at the studio eventually. You right? do you think Dana Walden is still in the, in contention? I think she she seems I think highly she has qualified the same and well that, liked. I think she has the same problem that Demaro has, where she's not diversified. She doesn't know anything about the park side, right? And the park side's important. Yeah. Right. So both of them don't have the complete portfolio, as opposed to, you know, the combination of Meyer and Staggs, where they 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 cover all the bases. It's easy. I think it's a slam dunk. I think they'd be stupid to not put the two of them in charge. Tom Staggs. Look at the resume in parks and resorts for Tom Staggs. Hong Kong Disneyland turns a profit for the first time when he allows them to create two lands with original attractions, Mystic Manor and Grizzly Gulch. Tom Staggs is there through the creation of the, the new Disney California Adventure, right? Cars Land, Buena Vista Street, New Fantasyland at the Magic Kingdom. Finally building on the abandoned half of pop century. Um, the, the resume during those years is phenomenal. And then Meyer is the, is the uh, honestly, more than Bob Iger, the man behind the original success of Disney+. Plus. I, I don't think you discount him either. I think the two of them together are the right combination. What happens if they approach them about their interest and they're like, yeah, but only if it happens now. Does, does Iger step down ahead of his 2026 20, plan departure? He would, but he, they've already said he's talking to them. So there's already conversation. So maybe it's already decided and like no one wants to talk about it yet. But um, if they're still talking to him, I assume there's something in it for them. There you have it. Right? Who do you want? Or who do you think is? The I don't know. I think there's somebody I don't know about. So, I've, I've most of my life I've been a sports fan, and every time that my team hired a coach that was like a well a, a name I knew well and and wanted, they've sucked. And every time they brought in somebody who I was like, oh, I didn't think about this person. I don't really know much about them, but they've had success somewhere else. You know, there's a million people out there. Yeah. Not a million, but there are people out there. You know, I I talk about basketball. I can't. Kansas hired – Roy Williams leaves Kansas unexpectedly. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, they're going to – you know, maybe Rick Pitino or, you know, all these pe- all these names of people I knew of who they're going to hire. They hired this guy, Bill Self. But, you know, I was like, oh, I've heard of him, you know. Same thing they did with football. They hired this guy, Lance Leipold. You're like, oh, what, he won six national championships at Wisconsin Whitewater. Who cares? And he's been great. You never know. Yeah. Right? You give some of these people, you know, a, a big shot, and some of them will work out and some of them won't. Yeah. And I'm anxious to see what happens. I don't, you know, I don't re- necessarily have a rooting interest, although I would root for someone who's highly competent and, yeah. you know, engaged, not somebody who's half, you know, got one foot in and one foot out, which yeah. I think Bob Iger is a little distracted right now. I think Bob Iger is so used to having success that he's struggling to handle adversity as well as he should. Mm. I think that the company is. The company needs to pick a successor sooner rather than later and yeah. move on. And I thank him for what he has done. And there have been some mistakes along the way. And and I hope then you know that there's a good legacy that he can leave behind. Yeah, maybe and forget some of the bad decisions and focus on some of the good. Yeah. But also, never mind. What I was going to say a bad word about Bob Chapek and. We can't drop f bombs on this. He's show. already dead, <laughs> as far as you know. What was that? Is that The Simpsons? Like, stop, stop. He's already dead. I just leave him. He's 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 gone. He's long gone. He's gone. It's it's over. We can move on now. Oh, in the chat, uh, Jake said uh, Disney Plus is for Bluey. That's correct. the The standard bearer for Disney Plus is Bluey. Yeah, that's good. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on this. Um, Terribly long episode of us talking about Bob Chapek, Bob Iger, yeah. and all the potential successors. Also, thanks to all the Wigs members for watching. And all you out there, again, uh, let us know in the comments. You have ideas for other episodes you like to see us go into, topics yeah. of discussion, things like that. And we'll see you next time.
See you real soon. Thank you.